Let's do some word level analysis relation to key quotes on the character of Juliet. Okay, so of course, she is the other main protagonist that you need to memorize important key quotations. Now, the first quote to remember from Juliet is when she meets Romeo, falls in love with him at the Capulet Ball, then realizes that he is a Montague, and she exclaims in Act 1, Scene 5, I must loathe, love a loathed enemy. Okay, now the word level analysis to do with this quotation is the alliteration of L, love and loathed. Okay, now what this shows is her deep disappointment and her deep sadness at the fact that fate has written into the stars that she's going to fall in love with the sworn enemy, in other words, the son of the sworn enemy of her father and mother. Of course, this is Romeo. The other key quotation to remember when it comes to Julia's character is when she infamously, so arguably this is probably the most famous quotation from the entire play and probably amongst there, up there with one of uh, Shakespeare's most famous quotations is when she says on her balcony, O Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Okay, now of course this quotation is really important because she doesn't realise that Romeo can hear what she's saying. She's asking this, so of course this is a rhetorical question, she's not looking for an answer, okay? So firstly, this is a rhetorical question. She is pondering, where is Romeo? How are we going to solve this issue? Because I am in love with somebody who is part of the sworn enemy of my family, but actually I also don't see violence as the way out. I don't understand this whole uh, scenario has made me question where, why we even have this feud going on, okay? So she's questioning, where is Romeo? So on the one hand, this is a rhetorical question in terms of uh, analysis of this entire sentence, but of course also the repetition of Romeo. She repeats it three times, Romeo, Romeo, and Romeo. Of course, what this shows is her deep level of infatuation and obsession with Romeo after the ball. Then afterwards, Romeo does emerge, and then she also later, uh, before actually she speaks to him, so before he emerges, she also says, deny thy father and I'll no longer be a Capulet, okay? And there's ellipses there, so deny thy father, I'll no longer be a Capulet. This is Act 2, Scene 2, this is before he emerges, and of course tells her that he actually does love her. Now, in this uh, quotation, do focus on the idea that this is an imperative sentence. It's telling Romeo, of course she's speaking out, she doesn't realise that Romeo can hear this, and then of course later on he does emerge and they agree to marry, but she says deny. This imperative sentence goes against the idea of duty. She's basically saying, if Romeo, you deny your duty towards your family, I'll also deny my duty towards my family and we can be happily married. We'll just reject this notion and this identity of being Montagues and Capulets and we can live blissfully together, okay? So that's an imperative sentence. The other key quotation is when she speaks to Romeo, so he emerges and she promises her loyalty. She says, my fortunes at thy foot are laid. And this is again in the same act two, scene two. So these first two quotations are before Romeo emerges, he's listening, he then emerges, and then she says, my fortunes at thy foot are laid, okay? And this is basically her promise, and this is alliteration of F, okay? Word level analysis there, fortunes and foot. Here she's just basically saying, if you will commit to me and commit to marrying me and obviously commit your love to me, I promise you that all my future, my fate, that will be handed over to you. I'll basically be the submissive wife that you want me to be. The other key quotation to bear in mind with Juliet's character is later on in Act 3, Scene 2, when she learns that Romeo has killed Tybalt. Of course, she only hears one part of the story. She doesn't realise that actually Romeo had tried not to use violence initially, but then of course Tybalt uh, violently killed his friend and that's what led Romeo to kill him. Now, she speaks using oxymorons, which mimics and reflects how Romeo initially also spoke with oxymorons when you're thinking about Rosaline, okay? So she says, beautiful tyrant, fiend angelical. Both of these are oxymoron, beautiful and tyrant. And uh, tyrant is somebody who is evil, uh, usually quite ugly, okay? And the oxymoron of fiend angelical, fiend is a devil, angel is uh, a creature that lives in heaven. Now, of course, this oxymoron shows and highlights her own inner conflict and her inner turmoil. She's supposed to hate Romeo like everybody does for, of course, being part of the Montagues, but equally killing her cousin, but she can't reconcile with that, okay? She still sees him as a beautiful tyrant and as an angelical fiend.
The other key quotation is from Act 3, Scene 5, later on, and this is when she is essentially saying that I will not marry yet. And this is after she's basically told that she has to marry Paris. She tells her mum, please go and tell my dad that I'm not ready for marriage. Now, this is powerful because it goes against what Elizabethans would expect of women. Women were supposedly meant to be like very passive, very kind of accepting of what their parent, family and parents told them. But she speaks in command and she tells her mum, I will not marry yet. Okay, and this is an imperative sentence. The other key quotation from Act 4, Scene 2 is when she's talking to Friar Lawrence and she's trying to hatch a plan with him. And she says, God joined my heart and Romeo's. Okay, and of course the hyperbole is here when she says, God joined my heart. That The fact that their love was almost written in the stars. The final quotation is of course when she commits suicide, she wakes up and realises that both Romeo and Paris have died. Of course she's really upset that Paris has died but more so that Romeo, her true love, has died. So she decides that she's going to seal their love in the stars and join him in heaven. And she says and she finds the dagger because at first she tries to drink the poison off Romeo's lips, it's not potent enough so she takes the dagger and decides to stab herself. But before she stabs herself she says, oh happy dagger, then ellipsis, let me die. And this is from Act 5, Scene 3 and of course the dagger is personified as happy. So that's it when it comes to key quotations to remember for Juliet's character and word level analysis.